What's going on people? Welcome back to another episode in our career mode. You could probably hear we are not in my usual setup so I apologize for the background noise and all of that other stuff but in case you don't know I did post out something yesterday that basically said we are currently have experiencing issues with my internet at home so I'm having to go over to my parents house, well my mum's house and um, and actually record this in the spare bedroom so there's no acoustics to help out no little tile things that take away the echo so as I said I apologize for the echo if you can hear it in today's video but as I said there is nothing I could do about that I wanted to give you guys a video and I haven't been able to do that at home now the issue is which I've quickly realized you even need internet to play Xbox because I couldn't even sign into my account to be able to record this video so I've had to take it all up to my mom's house on a, yeah, a really old laptop that I used to use for schoolwork and uh, recording it now so to, uh, yeah, as I said, you're going to have to just basically bear with me for today's video. And I wanted to give you guys it so you didn't think anything had happened. Because with this being this, it was about four days since the last video. And that's not intentional, but uh, I don't know what's going on. The company that I'm with just don't seem to be able to fix it and it's becoming a problem. But yeah, so I apologize as I said for the background noise. But also, if the quality of the video is a little bit uh, lower than usual, that will be the reason why. But we've got two games to play today. And I also showed you a bit of an unconventional squad report right at the start of the video. Because in case you didn't know, this year's FIFA, the squad report feature has been taken out of career mode. It's been replaced with a squad hub where you can check out more than just how the players are performing and the stats and such. So uh, yeah, I showed you a little bit of how we are looking with our current squad, the stats that the players are currently on. And all that good stuff right at the start of the video just to give you guys that something to look forward to. But the first game of the two, actually, we played Cologne. And as I mentioned, when we faced them earlier on in the season, they've done some good business. They've got a, a few decent players, Channel Oglu being one of them at the club. But we were on fire in this first game. Andy Carroll scoring his third Bundesliga goal of the season before Arp hits an absolute worldie in the 30th minute to give us a two-goal advantage. And at this point, the points were coming home. I knew full well the way that this game was going, it was going to be a good day at the office. The bonus as well of this, of course, my internet going down, is that um, on my usual setup at home, because I'm quite condensed in what I have available to me, I play on quite a small screen, whereas here, there's not a backup TV, so I had to actually record it from the main TV. So playing FIFA on a, uh, on a bigger TV than usual was certainly a nice experience and uh, it certainly gave me a little bit use, uh, I guess, a little bit more to look forward to. And it might have been why we were able to play so well in the first game of today's episode as we go 3-0 in front here. The cross towards the back post and then Kostic a rove to, uh, in order to put us 3-0 up. A rove, is that the right word? I don't actually even know. But nevertheless, on the volley, or on the header, I should say, it was 3-0 and uh, I felt very confident that the points were coming home. So I decided to make a couple of changes. Changes. In the last episode, you may have known, it was quite a few days ago, we did make the signing of Alfonso Davies from, um, was it Vancouver Whitecaps he played for previously? Uh, and uh, he actually is in the team, yet to make his debut, so I decided to bring him on for the last few minutes in this game and see if we could get him a goal. And he thought he'd actually got his debut goal as well, and the ball found him at the back post. His shot, though, is less than convincing, and he drilled it wide at that bottom corner. If it was on target, it might have had a position to actually go in the bottom corner itself, but... It was never really a threat from Cologne. I felt like we were doing our business defensively as well. Very good indeed. And uh, the only real chance they had coming there in the later stages of the game. And then we were able to clear the ball up with six minutes to go. And this is what Andy Carroll's on the side to do. Win headers. That's the only thing we want from big Andy Carroll. It's to win those headers and knock them down. And as Arp goes through here looking for the second of the game... He narrowly put it wide, and it just was not meant to be. It didn't look like we we're going to get four for the game, but in the end, we did get a 3-0 win after one more chance for Davies to make a claim in the game. Again, another really good attack down this left-hand side. Good cutting inside, and then he gets the shot away initially. It's saved well, and he should have scored the rebound. He ended up hitting it against the post, but it was the end of the game. It's three points for us. We continue our journey. We're still in the top four in the Bundesliga in our debut career here. I don't understand really how we've been able to do that other than the fact that this game's uh, legendary difficulty. Even with the side as we have set, is a little bit easier than it should be this year. But that's the way it goes. As we get a transfer offer here for Bobby Wood, quite happy to let him leave the club here to Aston Villa. £7.6 million was the initial offer, but we counter it and are able to negotiate about 95 for the Americans. So uh, we were quite happy to see him leave for that fee. It basically pays for Alfonso Davies outright. We don't have to worry about uh, you know getting the money in back for him. And to be honest, Bobby Wood, yeah, he's not the greatest striker in the world, as you've seen previously. Missing some chances that I felt he should have scored. 
And so I was quite happy to let this deal go through, especially with the upgraded offer of 9.5 million on the table. I was saying, there we go, Villa, take him off my hands. And although we did have enough money to be able to make something happen, there was only seven hours left in the deadline day, so I decided against it and just decided to keep the squad that we've got, minus Bobby Wood, keep the money and uh, use it again next season. So that is what we decided to do. Last game, though, for you all to enjoy comes against Rebel Leipzig. We absolutely got battered in the first half of this one. I just couldn't stop their attack, man. Sabitzer... But, you know, who else have they got? They've, they've just got a ridiculous team. And, and it was actually Sapitza who gave them the lead. You know, Timo Werner as well up front. Pace to bargain. It's just... It was so tough this first half. I'm not going to lie to you guys. We've already lost to them once this season by a goal to nil. And it looked like that was going to be the case again here when Sabitza scored in the 37th minute. And uh, as the second half began, I decided that we were going to try and change the game a little bit. Went on to attacking, looking to get on the front foot. Uh, Alfonso Davis, <laughs> I don't know what happened to him. I brought him on at around about the 40th minute mark. And uh, he should have put us in the uh, equalising goal here. I don't quite know how on earth he missed that one. Also, I am on my backup mic as well. So if there's a difference in audio quality on that front, I apologise as well. Timo Werner should have put Leipzig 2 in front, but was unable to do so. His shot going just over the top of the crossbar. And then this happened, 65 minutes in, this just summed up the game really, a Lewis Holtby effort was blocked by his own teammate on the way through, and ended up seeing it go out of, po out of place, so yeah, things weren't going well, and it got even worse when Sabitzer, who pretty much ran the show for Red Bull Leipzig, put them 2-0 in front, with 20 minutes to go, and it looked like it was going to be one of those games, as you can see, so... Not good, not a brilliant performance by any means, and uh, it looked like it was going to be a bad day at the office from us. Although, we were able to make a claim for something. Straight from kickoff, pretty much, we got underway, and not too long after, we were able to get a chance. It came from Kostic, a lovely ball into Arp, the 1-2 returned, he burst through, got inside the area, and put it underneath the on-rushing Leipzig goalkeeper to give us a lifeline with 15 minutes to go. And so we just had one more chance in order to try and get ourselves back on level terms. So at that, I decided to throw caution to the wind, switch the formation to 4-2-4 like we have done previously in the save and try and find this equalising goal, as you can see, making the changes. We also brought on a new player as well. We swapped around uh, Muller. I think we brought on Bobby Wood, actually, the man that looked like he was going to leave the club in order to make that deal happen. In fact, actually, having said that, we hadn't even got into transfer deadline day. I made a mistake there. I thought this came after deadline day, but I was wrong. We hadn't actually even got into transfer deadline day. That is to come up. So, yeah, as I said, throwing caution to the wind, looking for an equalising goal. And then this man, Alfonso Davies, the new man at the club. Look at this. The close knit dribbling gets him inside and he finds the bottom corner with his right foot with nine minutes to go. And with that, it was Leipzig 2, Hamburg 2. A team that's already beaten us this season by a goal to nil. Looked like they were going to beat us 2-0 up until the last 20 minutes of this game when we found just enough in our locker in order to get the goal that we required to give us a lifeline and then find an equaliser. Last minute worries though as the ball was whipped in and Kevin Campbell here gets the ball. Keeps it in play actually really well. And then uh, I actually kind of had to breathe a little bit there because I thought Papadopoulos might have actually given away a penalty. Eventually though the shot comes in from Werner. It's wide of the post with a minute to go. And that was all she wrote for the game. So after the two games had been played, we'd won the first one quite convincingly. The second one was a remarkable comeback to get a point after a 2-2 draw against Red Bull Leipzig. And not a lot happening in terms of the match facts, but a lot happening in terms of the goals themselves because we were able to rescue ourselves a point. So that's it for the actual gameplay of today's episode. As I said, Bobby Wood is going to leave the club. You can see that right now on your screen with eight hours left in the deadline day. The deal to take him to Aston Villa was secured. We lost Bobby Wood, but I wasn't really that bothered. You know, it's 9.5 million, 7.5 of which was put back into the transfer funds for us to use. But as I said, I didn't do it because I didn't feel like we needed to strengthen in that area, especially with the acquisition of Davies. He comes in, he can play that striker role if we need him to do so. And actually considering the fact that Bobby Wood was maybe a backup I think that's good business as Feet Up picks up player of the month for this month. So sensational stuff from the young German. Uh, I apologise as well if you could just hear that because uh, I am right next to a window as well. So there's a lot of uh, cars going out and about. But showing you then the teams we've played so far, I think we've done pretty well. We're past the halfway stage. We've still got another, what, 14 games or something like that to go. I think actually, yeah, 14 games is how much money we've got left. Uh, there's only a few teams that have actually beaten us. One of them being Leipzig, Munch and Gladbach are another one. We haven't lost to Bayern. We've beaten Dortmund. We haven't lost to uh, Leverkusen, who are actually were top of the league. So looking at the head-to-head -head record between us and the rest of the teams in the division, I think we've done pretty well. I'm not going to lie to you guys. So as I show you the league table, there it is. Munch and Gladbach are top on 42. Leverkusen on 42 as well, but they do have a game in hand. Dortmund third. We are fourth with a game in hand. 
we win that, we will move right back up into that third place position. So, you know what? I think it's been a great first season here. 14 games to go. Where do you guys think we're going to finish? Leave me a comment down below. As I said earlier, I apologize for the lack of videos. It is really frustrating. There's nothing I can do about it until they fix my internet. This is only a temporary fix, me having to go to my parents' house. I can't record the Ji Xiang story because I need my actual other computer to do that because it's got everything I need in regards to the graphics and all that other stuff. So please bear with me, guys, while I get it all fixed. Um, obviously, it's not ideal for me either. I understand that and... Um, Luckily, this hasn't happened when FIFA 19 has just come out, you know. So that's it, though, from me for today, guys. I will see you all again, hopefully, when it is fixed. If not, probably maybe tomorrow. I'll see how it works out. And uh, stay tuned for more, guys. See you all then. Adios.